French win over finger slip variation another one for the channel uh, all together with the Marazzi Alekine that you can find uh, from a few weeks ago thank you all uh, for donations for your support thank you all for uh, cheering up and supporting me while I was uh, uh, infected and actually while I was under corona hopefully everything is getting back to normal I'm still recovering but it's fine finger slip variation is e4 a6 d4 d5 knight c3 bishop d4 and when they play this a winner variation of the french uh they just uh, we just go with bishop d2 <clears throat> it's very interesting line unlike all those main uh, variations and main positions of the winner defense where you usually play a3 and then you uh, capture and c3 by pawns here uh, you do that uh, with the bishop and you just want to keep the healthy pawn structure on the other hand you just want to give up pawn on e4 uh, but for what for a healthy pawn structure for the uh, activity of the bishop here and for queen g4 followed by long castle potential initiative and the attack uh, on the king side so let's go bishop d2 i usually uh, like to begin uh, with the most uh, direct like differences pluses and minuses of pawn. for example after bishop c3 bishop c3 this is the pawn you want to take by bishop and when they take pawn uh, in some positions i'm not saying now but you can just push your pawn to the to open the dark square bishop even here it wouldn't be that bad but you uh, why because you just open the game for bishops but you actually go for a queen g4 you threaten both you threaten pawn on e4 and pawn on g7 they gotta go knight f6 queen g7 rook g8 and this is a very pleasant bishop a very pleasant position you have the bishop here you don't have a broken pawn structure and your game look and now let me show you like um, a main pro of this variation in comparison to to the line that Robert James Fisher liked to play so much. After Bishop before, for a long time, Fisher used to play this a3 Bishop c3 b takes c3 d takes e4 Queen g4 Knight f6 and Queen h6. In this position, first of all, Bishop is still undeveloped on c1. Secondly, pawns are broken, and thirdly, um, you are definitely uh, worse in terms of development in comparison to the in our game we have this we have a healthy pawn structure bishop on c3 and we had a possibility to make castle and break in the center with f3 in this position we have this so this is the first plus of the finger slip variation in comparison to the a3 after you play bishop d2 uh, we've just seen first move let's go for the second traditional b6 all french players like to uh, trade the light square bishops they like to play bishop a6 you play bishop d3 they go bishop a6 and then you say hey, amen where are you going uh, you want to uh, swap off the light square bishops sorry but just like in alec and marazzi we just take on a6 play queen e2 and we threaten both knight on a6 knight on b8 doesn't work because of queen b5 if they first take on c3 you take and then you play knight f3 with a good flexible pawn structure and healthy pawn structure um, and uh, finally if queen c8 you just take on d5 and win the pawn let's immediately go to the third move it's c5 it's one of those typical french moves like a typical break in the center so they just go with c5 when they play c5 you just say okay not a big deal i'm gonna go with a3 they gotta take i say they gotta take because it makes no sense to take on d4 you take on d4 and after this once again you have open game and open bishops another possibility could be if they go back to a5 which is always bad you always take on c5 threaten b4 to connect your pawn so they have to take on c3 in which case you take by bishop and now you want to take on c5 but on top of all that you have the bishop here again i played a game <coughs> it takes c takes queen takes knight f6 you it take on d5 you go long castles and you play a very important helping 
F3. I'm not saying that he was threatening to jump on E4 now, but at some point he wanted to, for example, kick this queen away from the diagonal of the battery with the knight C6, and then to go knight E4. Here, that's not an option, because we got this pawn on F3. They can't play knight E4, harassing the bishop, threatening on F2, and doing exchanging their queens, which is basically going to give them an and after a bishop e6, you just play knight e2. I played a couple of blitz games in the past like this, with a relatively easy game and no problems for us at all. They can also go with knight e7. This knight e7, since I've been a French player for all these years, knight e7 is always a solid opportunity against all these side lines. Whether they play knight g on e2, I like kind of Whether they play queen d3, line that I want to teach you in uh, one of the future lessons, whether they want to uh, do something else. This 97 is always hyper solid. Against 97, you go for your main play, uh, a3, and you take by bishop on c3. If they go castles, you just go with bishop d3. You keep the game open. You have these bishops. You want to keep it like this. No c5 is, should be good because of d takes c5. Any d takes, you just play bishop e4. Any knight e5, you just keep the dark square bishop with bishop e2, go back, and you're just fine. When they take uh, bishop uh, on e4, you play queen g4 once again, threatening both uh, on e4 and g7. When they play castles, you take on e4. Um, I had a game. Uh, knight e7, bishop d3, threatened mate, knight f6, queen e2. The guy played knight g6, threatening knight f4 to remove the bishop here. I played knight h3. I know that the knight on h3 looks a little bit unusual and, let's say, unstandard. Uh, but knight on h3 basically stops that. And the full activity to white is... Let's go. We've seen, like, uh, four moves already. We've seen c5, e6, bishop c3. Seven. Time for one of the main moves, knight f6. It's a common possibility. You always kick it away. And now they have two options to take on c3, which is going to transpose into a position that resembles a catching variation. Or they can play knight d7. Any knight d7 is a typical French reaction, but after queen g4, we're just better. You know, I don't have to explain that. Here, unlike classic whenever positions, main lines, we don't have a broken pawn structure. We don't have a double pawns. We have a relatively healthy type of the game. Um, <clears throat> and where any bishop c3, we can take by bishop. It, they can never play castles because of bishop h6. This is a good reminder for all of you to trick. They probably have to go with g6 or king f8, in which case, if they play king f8, don't even hesitate to play knight f3 because any c5, you can always take, and you know that I told you to take to open the game, especially because the king is weak. Or you can just play a3, in which case you can take by both. You can take by pawn, or you can take by bishop, which probably should be your main alternative, since that's the point of this variation. Now they can play g6, but in that case, knight f3, why? To defend uh, this pawn chain, and when they play like this, you just play. In which case, once again, you can take by both, by bishop, which is the point of this line, or taking by pawn, which is also good because they have terrible problems in the dark sky. Just because of this, they had a guy to take on c3, you take by pawn, and once again, knight e7, queen g4, any castles, bishop h6, any king f8, don't ever hesitate, king is weak, let's go and let's push it. <clears throat> when you play like h4, you want to push your pawn up to h6, you want to break on the dark squares, you want to involve this rook. Uh, over the third rank with uh, rook h3, rook g3, or rook h3, rook f3. And this is nice, and this looks really, really good. Um, I'll show you a game. Two guys, uh, 20 to 50 level. The guy played uh, c5. This guy included, I played one game h5, but I want to show this guy. But rook h3, because I like the way he played. He played h5 to play h6. Of course, any time you play h5, you want to push this pawn up to h6 and weaken them. Of course, the guy had to play h6 and knight f3. And after this move, he wants to go with queen f4, knight h4, rook g, or rook f3. Uh, after f5, queen f4, 
Now your main idea has to become this. You went here, knight h4, threatening work. This guy played queen f7, broke with g4. And just when this guy said, okay, I'm going to hold my center somehow, c4. What a powerful game by white here and attack on the potential weak black center. White is so much better and he won this game very soon. I like the game. Speaking of that, I had my game where I played h5. I didn't hesitate and I did not play rook h3. And when the guy played h6, now I played rook h3. It's pretty much the same. The guy did not play queen e7 and f5, but played knight c6. I just played rook g3. And after bishop h6, won my game very soon. When, you, when they play this knight f6, c5, bishop c3, b takes c3 and knight e4, I'd like to stop here to discuss this position with you. What's the difference between this position and McCatchen and Rage? Now you play bishop c3. And all you say, so what's the point? The only point is that the pawn is not on h6. Uh, is it plus for white? Yes. Because in many situations, when you play queen g4 and they go g6, you can go with bishop h6, taking advantage of the good dark squares. Many times you just go h4, h5, and uh, they do not have a naturally placed pawn on h6, which controls a little bit better uh, dark squares. And in some positions, it can give slightly worse position for a black, but at least it's not as dangerous and uh, as lost as in any other positions. So it's queen g5. Here, that's not an option. You just uh, play like this, and white is fine. Um, once again, I want to show you one uh, nice uh, blitz game of mine played on chess.com a month ago. The guy took on c3. I played queen g4. I threatened the pawn. The guy played king f8. And um, I was analyzing this, preparing like one of my students to play this opening um, in uh, his rapid tournament online and by the way uh, i know that you always prefer when i tell you this variation could be used bullet let's rapid chess and you can maybe use it once in a tournament game because once they realize that you play bishop d2 they are going to come up with some pretty reliable opportunities for black as well and anyways i remember that i prepared that guy when the king comes on f8, it's weak all together with this knight. And you have the power of these bishops, and look how I won the game. I played queen f3, threatening the knight. Knight had to go on um, e4 in this position. Where else? If you go on a4, just check and goodbye. If you go on, the guy went on e4, and he probably thought, okay, I grabbed the pawn, it's fine. But I gave up, the, I, I, I gave this check. The guy played king g8, I played f3. Now you see the point of my queen h3 move. I just released the f3 for the pawn and I played h4 and won. Yeah, resigned the game. It's quite an interesting thing, and this line is full of interesting tricks. Let's go to the main move d takes c4. After d takes c4, we always have to queen g4. That's, anyways, the main idea of this system. It's not about getting like g7 pawn, by the way. With Really threatened that it's not about getting back pawn on e4 as well, but it's it's more like we want to play the long. When they go knight f6, that's the main line. But before we reach that main line, let's take a look uh, what I like to uh, play here with black pieces. It's queen takes d. I capture another pawn and I think it's pretty uh, okay for black. But then you go knight f3, harassing this queen temple. Queen f6, and you play a very interesting sneaky move along the line. They can't take on f3 because you played bishop g5, you try to mate, and the queen is lost. On bishop c3, you first take, and they are either going to lose the queen <clears throat> or get mated. In case of knight h6, you just go knight e4, uh, sorry, queen e4, threatening queen and threatening bishop g5. Once again, we threaten queen, bishop g5, and even bishop. They either have to play queen e7 or bishop d6. Now I'll show you two games. One game was my game. Uh, after like queen e7, uh, this is not my game. The guy just put the queen back and defended the bishop. So he is avoiding bishop g5 and defends the bishop. This guy played a beautiful g4, which points out how weak is this knight on h6 and that it can no longer go back into the game with the knight f5. After knight c6, 
bishop a6. Look what an interesting move. I'm not saying it's like the best move, but I kind of like this one. Um, it's a nice developing move. Of course, he could have gone with uh, bishop b5. But he just goes with this move because he just wants to play bishop b5. Uh, uh, sorry, he just wants this guy to go for castles, in which case he would include bishop g5, and in case of f6, bishop b5. So in case of f takes g5, check, check, da -da -da -da, checkmate. That would be a very nice uh, finish of the game. Guy took on c3, white played bishop c3, threatening this pawn seven, and after f5, g takes knight takes. Bishop b5 threatens on c6. Black played the only move. Rook h2 g1. Uh, and after g6, bishop c6. This guy resigned. Because after b takes c6, he couldn't stop queen e5 with further mating threats. But basically, you afterwards can think of doubling your pieces and going in. Back. You can also think of jumping on e5, sacking on e6. You can also think of, I mean, so many, so many good ideas. And and finally, in case uh, after like castles, knight h6, queen e4, and they bring the bishop back, this is my game. I played a very nice move. Sometimes I'm proud of my moves that that, that doesn't happen to me. Uh, I played bishop b5. Really difficult move. When I made it, I realized that the guy cannot jump with the knight. I just take it. Cannot jump. Uh, cannot move the bishop because I'm just taking it. Scanning. And cannot play <clears throat> c6 because then I play bishop g <coughs> bishop g5 in, in which case both of these queen on f6 and bishop d6 are hanging. So the guy played knight d7. Looks like the only move. I played bishop g5, queen g7. And here I realized that he was about to make castle and let's just say uh, get out of all these troubles and problems. I took on d7 and played queen b7. And probably when my opponent said, oh, let's just breathe easier and finally make castle, I came up with rook b6, one like um, two pieces and even pawn for the rook, which is practically dead wing. Finally, after castles, they can also play h5. h5 is one of the main moves, in, in which case you take. Once again, you threaten the queen b4. And once again, you threaten bishop b5. They gotta go here. Uh, if you ask me, can we play bishop b5 here? It is interesting. We could. We could. That could be interesting. But I'll show you a game of Rogowski. When this game played bishop g5, queen f5, captured, came up with this check and brought this for Look at this ideal development of white pieces. Unlike black, was actually having lots of problems with uh, all these uh, pieces, I'm talking about minor pieces, knights on g8 and b8, and heavy works on a8 and a8. Terrible position for me. The guy played king f8, and after he captured, played knight b5, and he. I was played in Russia, 2000. And they can play. I mean, they have to play knight f6. You take, they go like this, queen h6, and they grab another pawn. We, of course, make castle, and we gotta discuss this position. At the moment, we threaten bishop g5 to immediately win the piece. Don't forget, we're down to pawns. They cannot take of c3, bishop c3, and knight f6 is hanging. They can't, they, they have to keep an eye on bishop g5 threat, and in the game was queen f2. Knight h3, harassing this. Queen went on f5, and knight b5, threatening both. Knight c7, and the bishop on d4. After bishop d2, queen d2 wins, and in case of knight a6, you just take here and bring the queen back, which is a very nice trick, since you threaten queen d8, but when they play any of these knights on d5, you just go d7. That's why after long castles, you have to, they have to play knight bd7, getting like this flexible knight, and defending just knight f6. When that happens, you just have to go with f3. What's so special about f3? You open up game. Why is that so important? You have bishops. So what? So make them as active as possible. On the other hand, take a look at this king. King is weak. 
So activity of your pieces and active play is something that we're actually uh, strive, uh, striving to do and we just want to play uh, as active as possible. After queen b6, I'm especially happy with the next move, which prevents knight g4 and knight f2 for black, but at the same time gives you g4, g5, harassing that knight, threatening uh, eventually on h7, and just uh, not leaving uh, this king on e8 uh, being without any worries because we just want to develop the light square bishop, bring the rook on e e1, and get ready to get smashed. Hope you enjoyed in the finger slip variation. It's interesting. Uh, I'm sure uh, you'll have some nice results and wins in it. And uh, feel free to share your games with me in our The Butcher team. Just thank you so much and see you guys.